So this year, uh, site selection is crediting Texas with 1,028 qualified projects. Which, by the way, is more than twice the number of the second winning state for total projects. I don't know exactly how many of those 1,028 projects are corporate relocations for 2022, but I know that since 2015, 271 corporate relocations have taken place to Texas, 50% of which I believe came from California. <laughs> so that's quite a record. You know, at this time of year, um, I have the privilege as editor of interviewing governors, including Governor Abbott and Governor Laura Kelly of Kansas, the other Governor's Cup winner for this year again. And I want to thank them. And I, and I recently interviewed uh, Governor Andy Bashir of Kentucky. And I really want to give the governors credit for, for giving others credit to a person they Finally, in our tier three, fewer than 200,000, Sherman Dennison again finished sixth. So if you're from any of those communities, congratulations. With that, I will turn it over to Governor Abbott. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Well, I want to thank Mark Aaron and Site Selection Magazine for uh, this tremendous award, uh, but also uh, welcome you back uh, to the Governor's Mansion here in Texas, uh, your frequency in coming back here may qualify you to be able to register to vote here in the state of Texas. Uh, listen, I, I accept uh, this Governor's Cup on behalf of the people of the state of Texas. Every year that I've been governor, Texas has won this award. That's a testament, Mark, as you were saying, uh, to so many people who are involved in this process. Is is because uh, there are so many qualified people. And you mentioned the, the legislature. We have members of our legislature right here. I want to thank you all. So obviously, uh, one of the key districts that was at the top of performance uh, is represented by some of the folks here. Uh, but it's a legislature across the board has provided the tools, the resources, and the commitment to make sure that Texas is number one and remains number one. We know something else, and, and that is uh, that there uh, are ambassadors uh, who are the, the leaders uh, for both economic development uh, as well as outreach. And I'm looking uh, out on the crowd here. I don't see them. I'm guessing that they may be behind me. Uh, I'm, I'm told, uh, let me take, take a look around. I was looking for John Scott and Jane Nelson. All right. Well, I'll thank them anyway. <laughs> don't have to be present to win. So I wanted to, uh, we have ambassadors. Uh, it's the Secretary of State for the state of Texas. And the one who served as Secretary of State last year is John Scott, and he traveled internationally as well as uh, within the state of Texas to advance Texas economically. And we have a new Secretary of State this year, Jane Nelson, former senator for the state of Texas. And she will be doing the very same thing uh, in the role of Secretary of State. We also know very well that awards like this uh, really are the fruit of the hard work that is put in uh, by local officials. It could be local elected officials, uh, local economic development professionals, uh, local chambers of commerce. We often uh, see these deals bubble up from uh, those levels. And the tireless ongoing work uh, by these officials is what really leads to so many of these projects that actually got us above the 1,000 mark uh, for qualifying projects this year. And of course, I want to thank Adriana Cruz and her team uh, at the Governor's Office of Economic Development and Tourism. Adriana Cruz is uh, the very best of the best when it comes to economic development, and it shows uh, with the results. But most importantly, obviously, uh, we want to thank the businesses, the business CEOs and business leaders who make the decisions to either come to Texas or to expand in Texas. 
They're the ones who uh, are working with us. They're the ones who create the jobs. They're the ones who expand uh, their enterprises in, in ways that not only help their businesses be more successful, but also help Texas be more successful. Together, we are making Texas the economic envy of the United States of America. You know, the word peerless is a word that can rarely be used because rarely is someone or something peerless. There's always peers that can challenge that peer. Peerless is something that few achieve. Texas repeats it now for 11 years in a row. Mark, we have a challenge ahead of us, uh, and that is uh, I see a table over there <laughs> full of governor's cups. I see a table over here full of governor's cups. It's time for Texas to get another table <laughs> to start lining up more governor's cups. <laughs> Briefly, 2022 was a record-breaking year for the state of Texas economically. The state of Texas ranked number one in the United States for the most new jobs added, adding more than 650,000 new jobs, growing also at the fastest rate of any state in the United States. A record number of Texans have a job today. In fact, more Texans have a job than 46 states have population. And as you pointed out, Texas has gained more than 270 corporate headquarters that have moved here since I was first elected. In this past year, Texas became home to more Fortune 500 company headquarters than any other state in the United States of America. So why are we so successful? In addition to, to the hard work of all these economic development professionals, there are some very tangible policy reasons that are coming from the legislature that make Texas so successful. One is low taxes. In Texas, we disdain taxes so much, we actually passed a constitutional amendment to make income taxes unconstitutional in the state of Texas. And we have a regulatory environment that moves at the speed of business. We have investments both in infrastructure and workforce, like the recent announcement of $100 billion investment to build out infrastructure in the state of Texas. But the real secret that we have is that we genuinely partner with the businesses that already do business here or those that want to do business here because we know that working together, those businesses will be even more successful. Also, very importantly, we work on spreading economic prosperity to every region across the state. You mentioned some, whether it be in, in the large metros, but there are some in small and mid-sized communities across the state. I'll mention a few. Highly Innovative Fuels, located in Bay City, Texas. Globotech in Sherman. Schneider Electric in El Paso. And many more like that, that make not just our metro areas, but the entire state one of great prosperity. So Mark, thanks again to you and Site Selection Magazine. And here's to many more years of economic prosperity in the great state of Texas. Thank you all. Few questions. I think the answer is not at all for two reasons. One, the economic environment in the state of Texas and the regulatory environment in the state of Texas is so appealing to so many businesses. I hear in California that the lead reason why businesses leave there is not because of high taxes, which are high, but because the regulations make it impossible for businesses to be able to function. But in addition to that, as you've already seen and heard, uh, there are great legislative proposals that are being offered up that would replace 313 to ensure that Texas continues to have very substantial economic development tools. So Texas is able to attract people from across the country uh, just because of the way we do business. 
And we expect to be able to continue to do that because we will continue the policies that make it affordable and successful for businesses and individuals to operate here. Go ahead. Listen, there, there are a lot of solutions that have been put on the table during uh, the early part of the session, uh, and what we need to do is to go through each of them and figure out which solutions will lead to the best results. So I, I will say that it is an innovative approach uh, to providing economic development incentives that focus strategically on, on ways that uh, will not only attract businesses, but also will, will improve the future of Texas. So that's one potential idea, uh, and there will be others. I support it not uh, providing economic incentives for renewables. And understand this, there's, as I understand it, there's already uh, federal incentives uh, for renewable projects, and those will continue to be allowed uh, the, the, as it concerns especially energy and power and the power grid. Uh, our focus is on dispatchable power to make sure that we will have the needed dispatchable power to provide reliable electricity to everybody in the state. Thank you all very much.